when I go out there, first things when anyone sees me, they always ask, are you a model? You know, mm -hmm. I, it has given me so many privileges when I'm flying or when I check in some hotel or, you know, anything. But when I come back to my own country, people don't give back the same. A, a story a day. Eleanor Mosangi is only 28 years old, believe it or not, 28 years old. She's already a mother to a six-year-old daughter. When I go out there, first things when anyone sees me, they always ask, are you a model? You know, mm -hmm. I, it has given me so many privileges when I'm flying or when I check in some hotel or, you know, anything. But when I come back to my own country, people don't give back the same. Um, uh, the story is incredible. She'll tell us uh, she almost had her a bit by mistake and almost gave her up for adoption because what was happening was she was trying to get her career going mm -hmm. and career as a model. Make that a supermodel. That's what she's always wanted to be. Ever since she watched her first episode of America's Next Top Model, ah. she always knew she was destined for this. And you can tell she's got the height, she's got the look, she's got the confidence, and she always wanted to be a supermodel. So she has a kid and she tries to enter all these competitions. Guess what they tell her? Mm. No way. You have a child. No way. I love Yeah. This is Miss World. This is Miss Beauty. Miss this, Miss that. So you're not allowed. Disqu instant disqualification. Pop Can you imagine that kind of discrimination? Bye. So then she enters Miss Global Kenya. Mm. First time, second time, third time. She's getting to the top three. That's it. Top three, that's it. And Anusia to you. And Anusia to Kampali. Since 2017, finally, on her fourth try, she gets it and she's crowned Miss Global Kenya. Hey. Congratulations for that, which means that this coming August, mm. she's off to Bali in Indonesia. Mm. Nasi Mali. Kusi seme Mali. Bali. Bali. In Indonesia, mm. where they're going to crown the world's Miss Global. So, what a story. Elena Musangi, welcome to the studio. Good Thank to see you. you. Thank you, Jeff. How are you doing? Clyde. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, the minute you walked in, I could tell you have a lot of confidence. Is this something you had growing up? Although, I mean, did you, were you always this confident? You walk into the room and you own the room. I think it came from my bringing, being the firstborn. I had to take on responsibilities at quite an early age. And also the kind of life that I've lived has exposed me to be in a place where I have to be confident for myself. Because as a single mom, you have to watch out for yourself as well as watching out for your kids' mm -hmm. well-being. When did you know you were destined to be a model? How old were you? Mostly from people's compliments. But my dad, my dad saw it in me. He was a very exposed man to life based from how he named me, because he named me after Eleanor Roosevelt. Mm. And he used to tell me, you know, she's a unique woman until I, I grew up and I came to learn about her. So that kind, of conf that kind of exposure that he gave me is what instilled the confidence that I've grown up with. Yeah. yeah. So w when you were studying, what did you want to be when you grew up? What, did you, what was your intention? I wanted to be a journalist. Oh. <laughs> 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 Retirement things <laughs> but out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still want to? Yeah. You okay, still want, want to, to, huh? Yes, oh, very good. good. I actually went back to school late in 2020 mm -hmm. to pursue communication. So it's something in the future that I'll still want to get in. in. Very good. Very yeah. good. So now uh, you suddenly find yourself pregnant. Mm-hmm. And you're in the middle of pursuing this dream of yours. Yeah. Right? What happened? What goes through your head? Like now you're carrying a baby and you're 22. I mean, you're very, very young. What happened? When I look back, I would only say I was naive. And uh, I was very young and I was naive. And I was also a bit ignorant. Like I, Because in school they taught us these things. You should not have unprotected sex and blah, 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 blah. But you know... You meet someone, you fall in love, and you know you just become ignorant of some things, and especially not knowing the long-term consequences these things might have on your career and the future that you're you're setting out into. So uh, primarily, when I look back, that is what actually caused me to get pregnant. I was very ignorant. And your parents, what did they think about it? 
of course my mom wanted to kill me. <laughs> I was more afraid of my mom more than anything else. But my dad, my, my, my dad was, was very supportive. Actually, when I had the news first, because you know, I was the firstborn in our family, I had a I had a People were very confident because I passed well in KCSE. I got a B minus, and people were very confident I was going to pursue my dream of journalism. And now this thing has come up. To be very honest, the first thing that I wanted to do was commit suicide. Yeah, and 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 I called my dad, and and he was in the village, and he told me no matter the case, I'm there with you. He actually looked for a friend of his who had a taxi to come and get me from where I am. Because believe me, had my dad not taken that step. I would have gone off the bridge because I saw like I come from a family where I was struggling to help my parents make it better in life at that particular moment. And so when I saw what I had done to my own self, the only best option that came to my mind was to end it. Oh my goodness. Jump off a bridge. Yeah. And you look at your daughter now six years later, what do you see? She is the pride of my life. My, my, her name is Chanel. Chanel is, is my everything. She has been the factor. You know, there's that point in life where you get an it factor to push you. She's that it factor that pushes me to go harder in life. Yeah. Yeah. And look, you entered many competitions. Yes. Even this current one, Miss Global Kenya. Yeah. You entered it more than once. Yes. I mean, most women, most people would enter a competition, even if they make it to number three or top five or whatever it is, they would move on. They would move on and say, okay, maybe this is not for me. You kept going back. Why? Because I, I believe that this platform would give, me a, would give me a chance to do better in life, especially when you come to understand where you are best suited at doing something. I know my physique and my, the gifts and talents that God has given me and also the experiences that I've gained out of life. I can be able to work with this platform best more than any other platform. That's why I kept going for my dream. Mm. And this was since 2017? Yes, even I think a little bit earlier than 2017. Because I've tried other sorts of modeling, not just beauty pageants. Mm -hmm. But every time my age, oh, I have a kid, and there's always a stumbling block that would cause me not go to the next step. And how would you feel when they, I mean, it's, obviously that's discrimination, right? Yeah. How would that make you feel? Of course, you get heartbroken. It, bro it really broke my self-confidence and my self-esteem. At one given point, I came home and I told God, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. I, I deleted all my portfolio photos. Like I, I told God, give me, give me a fresh start. Give me a fresh interest. Let me pursue something else in life. Because I'm also an entrepreneur. I've ventured in fashion, business, and marketing. So I told God, you know, this kind of... This full, this full energy that I go at in modeling, let me divert it to something else. But it always came back to modeling at the end of the day. Yeah. And then finally, you were crowned Miss Global Kenya. <laughs> How was that feeling? I could not even believe it. Like, my daughter kept on reassuring, Mommy, you know you're Miss Global Kenya. Mommy, you know. Mm -hmm. Mommy, you know. <laughs> Mommy, you know. And actually, I think the more she said it, the more it sank in me. Because sometimes, even when I'm walking and people call me Miss Global, it still doesn't feel real. So now it's going to be on the catwalk, uh, evening, whatever, you know, just like a proper yeah. pageant. Yes. It's actually a pageant like any other, mm -hmm. but the only, the beauty about this that it gives single women who are single mothers a chance, which I think other beauty pageants should embrace too. So every one of the women who are participating are parents, I mean, they are mothers? Not really. Not all, okay. Yeah, but they give that chance. They will not, they not discriminate you out because you're a single mom. Right. Yeah. And when is this competition? It's going to be, it's going to happen in September. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to travel there at the end of August. For two weeks, I've been in Bali for two weeks. And now you're ending up there as a contestant. Yes. Representing Kenya. Yes. Wow. That's deep. That's very deep. Yeah, I love traveling, and uh, one one of the things that actually got used to discourage me, especially when I come back home, when I go out there, first things when anyone sees me, they always ask, "Are you a model?" You know, mm. I, it has given me so many privileges when I'm flying or when I check in some hotel or you know anything. But when I come back to my own country, people don't give back 
the same, you know. So, but I am I'm happy that you know this is finally coming home, and I am very confident I'm going to bring this home. It's funny, uh, you're right. You never recognize in your own home, huh? Also, you never appreciate it yeah. in your own home. Yeah. I can imagine out there they are falling all over you, saying, "Is this Naomi Campbell or is this?" Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, they are. Most people say that you know, we look alike with Naomi or Tyra. Or Tyra Banks. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you tell them? <laughs> I'm from I Kenya. just smile off and I let it go. Because yeah. you know you can't explain. There's something about a person that you know you just can't explain. If it's there, just take the compliment yeah. and leave. You yeah. don't need to defend it. And just smile. Yeah. Tell me something. How are you preparing for this competition? What's the preparation? I have an incredible team of four ladies who have been giving me a thorough preparation in terms of fitness, in terms of public speaking, in terms of my social impact uh, initiative that I've been doing. So in terms of, of, of so on wardrobe and styling when I'm doing photo shoots, so I can really tell you that I'm, I'm quite backed up. And I'm sure your social media handle is, uh, is uh, overflowing. If uh, people want to take a look at your profile uh, after they see this interview, how do they get in touch or how do they see? Yeah, you can, uh, on Instagram, I'm Mikabella or simply search Eleanor Mosangi on Instagram, on Facebook and even on Twitter. All three, yeah? Yes. Well, who is Mikabella? Mikabella is a nickname that I got when I was growing <laughs> up. Okay, so look, um, obviously you're very confident that you, how, how well do you think? You think you can go all the way in this competition? I'm I sure. will go all the way. You're gonna bring back. You're gonna come back with a crown. I'm gonna come back with that crown. You're telling us this this morning. Yeah. You're announcing. I'll that. be back with that crown. I'll be seated here. We'll be having a different conversation. Oh my God. Yes. Okay, we're gonna hold you to that, okay. Eleanor. We're gonna hold you to that, Micabella. <laughs> And tell me, um, have you been looking at the competition? Obviously, you must be able to see the competition online or wherever they are. Can you see them? Are you? Yes, I can see mm -hmm. at least. Not the current ones, but the ones that have gone there before me yeah. and, you know, how they've performed. So I've learned from them and I purpose to outperform what they have done. Hmm. Yeah. Do you have to have a special skill in any, anything or, you know, singing or whatever, do you? Not, not really, okay. but basically what do I bring? Hmm. What do I bring? Why should they pick me as Miss Global? For me, I believe... I believe I have a teachable learning attitude and as long as we are willing to learn there's always room for better. This competition actually means global deserves better and better is what I'm going to give in Miss Global. Mm. Yeah. Are there uh, other Africans coming as well? Are there... Yes, there are other Africans. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who is the last winner? Has an African ever won Miss Global? Actually no. Hmm. I, I hope to be the first one to actually bring this on Miss Global. Look at this. And you're confident, aren't you? I'm very confident, Jeff. What if it doesn't happen, Elena? What if, I mean, you know, look, you know, life has a way of, you know, uh, has a sense of humor. Sometimes you, you, you get so close, like you've done before. Yeah. You've come so close to winning Miss Global Kenya, and you didn't. You came third, you came second. What if you don't make the top three here? If I don't make the top three, I'm going to continue what I've been doing. I have a social impact plat uh, initiative. It's called Gift a Child. I've been doing Gift a Child now for the last nearly four years on my own, from my own contributions and maybe a few of my friends, which basically I do is I feed kids and I empower single women to rise above their, the situations of the challenges that they are facing. So even if that doesn't go through, I still have a purpose for me, which is even more driven than having that crown on my head. Because I believe you are not a model because someone gave you a crown on your head. You are a model by what you do. And at 28 years old, you don't think you're getting too old at this? I, I'm just, you know, playing devil's advocate. I'm just. You yeah, because I've, I've, I've had that. But I'm very young in spirit and I know what I want to go for in life. So age for me, honestly, is not a, a factor. Mm. Yeah. You seem very confident, Eleanor. You seem very confident. You have to be confident. You know, you grow to a certain point in life when you get to self actualization. The story you described about you almost committing suicide once you found out you were pregnant. Mm. A lot of women are probably going through that right now. A lot yeah. of young women. They're confused. They are angry. Their parents want to kill them. You know, there's so much. And then there's corona on top of that. So mental health takes effect. So many issues. What do you tell that young lady out there? What do you tell her if she finds herself in the position you were in? Find someone and talk to them. 
honestly talk a lot of people are perishing because you, you, you feel like if you hold it in by yourself, you'll be able to manage it. Find people. Of course, some people will not maybe listen and give that much help. But the fact that you're speaking, you're letting it out, it makes it a lot easier than you having to, to carry it on, on your own. Yeah. And also, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer of incorporating faith in our lifestyle and not just any kind of faith but faith in God. If you're able to reconnect your relationship to God, God has a way of healing us because I always I believe that no one knows you better than the person that created you. Yeah. That woman who almost killed you, I'm talking about your mother when she found out you were pregnant, <laughs> what does she think now? She is my number one fan. Because <laughs> first of all, she loves my daughter too much. You know, it gets to a point I, I, I tell her, Mom, you, you know, this is my baby, you know? Like, you, if let's say I'm, called, I'm disciplining Chanel on something, you know, Mom will tell me I'm too strict. I'm like, Mom, you were worse than this when I was growing up. <laughs> you know, but it, life has a way of, of also healing, healing things up with time. You guarantee us Eleanor today you're gonna to win Miss Global yes I think I'm the I'm the first one of you know so far that I've seen on beauty pageants giving out such a promise and by the grace of God I know that I'll be able to deliver this mm -hmm. yeah. who, by the way who's uh, Miss Global can you organize by who, who the organizer? Zarila ah, Zarila Murali yes 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 fantastic and this is its 10th year it's been going on for yes for the last 10 years how far has a Kenyan gone in the last 10 years? How far? Uh, the last one, I think she got to less than top 21. Whoa. Yeah. And you are serving notice. Number one, Niako. Yeah. Hmm? I'm not going, I'm actually not going to co compete. I'm going for my crown. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You're not going to compete. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eleanor Musagi, I'll give you the final word now. A lot of people are listening to you for the very first time. Probably they've never heard of you, but they've listened to you for the first time. And a lot of people are very impressed. Uh, what do you tell them? Eleanor Musagi, heading to Bali, Indonesia to compete in Miss Global. What do you tell them? One. I have two things. One, reconnect your relationship to God. You know, having a healthy and active relationship with God will take you far through in life than most of anything else that will ever come through. And two, always believe in the beauty of your dreams because dreams do come true. Mm. Yeah. And dreams, like uh, Lupita Nyong'o once said, dreams are valid. Yeah, dreams do come true. That's my <sighs> mantra in life. Dreams do come 